Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> it is good to be here this morning. Oh, I hope everybody had a blessed week that we can find some reason and something to be thankful for. Because Hashem is always so good. Um, he is in control of all things. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that resilience that we talked about last week. Uh, three steps to getting back to the baseline uh, to your life and having that peace back in your life. So uh, we will start with that also. We are live. So, if you would, we're going to go ahead and start. Everyone stand and turn to Psalms 22. We'll read verse 1 through 11. Psalms 22. To the chief singer on Doe of the morning, a psalm of David. My El, my El, why have you forsaken me? Far from saving me in the words of my groaning. O oh, my Elohim, I call by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet, you are set apart. You are Kodesh, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our, father entrust, our fathers entrusted you, they trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you and, you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of man and despised by the people. All those who seek me mock me. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head. He trusted in Hashem, let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, seeing he has delighted in him. For you are the one who took me out of the womb, made me secure on my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my ill. Do not be far from me, for distress is near, for there is none to help. We lift up our eyes. Shem, Adonai, Elohim, thank you for this day, Abba. Tati, you are so good to us. Uh, lead God and direct us in this message, Hashem, that we would just praise you in all things, uh, that you would speak for us, give us a clear mind, a focus uh, to uh, present this message, that people would be able to understand it and also to apply it in their lives. May we be able to absorb, process, and then proceed and make those changes in our lives, those actions that bring life. Hashem, you are so good to us. We are humble before you always. Uh, how you teach us, you guide us, your kindness is so true. You're, you are always good in everything you do, and everything you do is right. We just want to honor you. Thank you for the people that are here. Thank you for the people in our lives, Hashem, that bring light to our lives uh, and give un understanding even when we are corrected. We just lift you up on high. There is no one like you, no one beside you, no one is your equal. Keep driving us. Continue to be with us. Oh, please do not forsake us. Baruch Hashem, hallelujah, amen. So, everybody has been there. Everybody has been there. Psalms 22, verse 1, to the chief singer on Doe of the Morning, a psalm of David. My El, my El, why have you forsaken me far from saving me and the words of my groaning? Oh, my Elohim, I call by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Everyone has been there. We call and no answer. We feel, and there's nothing. What is he doing? What is Hashem doing? There are definites in Torah. Okay? Should you eat shellfish? Should you honor the Sabbath? Should you honor your mother and father? Should you commit adultery? Should you steal? When it comes to those questions in your life, they're definites. No, you should not steal. No, you should not commit adultery. No, you should not eat shellfish. Yes, you should keep the Sabbath. So on and so forth. So those are definites in your life. Okay, If you have a decision to make, the Torah uh, explicitly and just plainly says, don't do these, do these. right? But there are some things in your life to which the decision is hard to make. And you do not know which decision to make. That is where David is now. Why are you so far from helping me? Where are you at? I'm asking these questions and I have no answer. I've heard before, and we're going to start driving with this, we're going to start this message with this, the teacher is silent during the test. The teacher is silent during the test. If we had a title for this message, we'll go ahead and get into it. It's called, Make a Decision. Just make a decision. This is how he talked to me this week. So I was journaling. If you aren't journaling now, start today. <laughs> it's simple. It's simple. Just write down what's on your mind. Write down what's on your mind. Your journal is your best friend. 
You do not have to tell everybody everything that's on your mind. You do not have to express yourself in uh, word vomit to everybody, okay? You don't have to tell everybody everything that's on your heart. If you notice, the righteous can hold their tongue, but the wicked pour out their heart, okay? So you don't have to tell everybody everything that's on your mind, but you can tell your journal everything that's on your mind, and you can tell it the thoughts that are in your head. So I was journaling, and I was saying within myself and even speaking with Hashem, I'm lost. What do I do? What decision do I make? I don't know which way to go. I feel so confused in my life right now. And then you know what he told me? There are two definites in your life. Two definites. You know what they are? Failure and success. Those are the two definites. So my advice to you this morning is take the chance. Take the risk. You don't know if failure is at the end of that decision. You don't know if success is at the end of that decision. And you know what? Making a decision and failing is better than not making a decision at all and considering in your life, what if? What if? You know what's crazy about our minds? We always think about the worst that can happen. The worst. Why don't we think about the best things that could happen if I make this decision? This could happen, and this could happen. If the decision that you are going to make for yourself sets you free, if the decision that you are going to make for yourself gives you peace, make that decision. Make that decision. I tell you this morning, making a decision and failing is better than not making a decision at all and never knowing what if. A lot of times we think about our past life. And when I say past life, uh, we go through stages of life, like I mentioned last week. We go through stages. Think about our past life. What if I would have done this instead? You know what? You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know what that decision, the direction it would have taken you. You know why? Because you made the other decision. So you know what? This is what Hashem gave me this morning. The past is dead to you. The past is dead to you. You cannot go back and relive it. You cannot go back and revive it from the dead. Because it's gone, y'all. It's gone. If you don't like where you're at, make a new decision. If you fail, then it change it. But I also want to encourage you this morning to think that if you make that decision and you take the risk and you make the choice, it could be great. It could be good. It doesn't always have to be bad. So the teacher is silent during the test. We've been taught in Christianity, you can't make mistakes. Every time you make a mistake, that's a punch to Jesus' face. You're the one that put him on the cross. Yeah. That's what they told you. So you were afraid of making mistakes. That's not what Torah teaches. So there are mistakes that we make willingly. Yes, you make bad decisions. Uh, think about David. David, he willingly made the decision to take Bathsheba. Was that the correct thing to do? No, it was not. So what happened? He suffered for his sins. That's what happens when you make a willing choice to sin. You suffer for it. Now, what does it say in Torah? It says that if you ignorantly sin, you shall ask for forgiveness and you shall be forgiven. Bring this and bring that and you'll be forgiven. If Hashem did not know that you were going to make mistakes in your life, why did he give you a way of reconciliation? He knew you were going to make mistakes. He knew you were going to mess up. He knew it. Forgive yourself. Be patient with yourself. There's something that I thought was really good as we meditated on the scripture, uh, scripture this week. He created all things in the beginning and they were good. They were not perfect. They were just good. Think about that. When he created Adam, he made Adam upright. If you look in Ecclesiastes, it says that he has made man upright, but man has sought wicked devices. 
That means that you have a choice. The ability is within you to do good. It's there. Okay? He made Adam, but people think, well, uh, he just made him perfect until the fall. He made Adam infallible. He could fault. He could make mistakes. Therefore, he took part of the fruit. Adam was not perfect. He was just made. Or fallible. I think it's fallible, not infallible. Infallible means you can't make mistakes. Fallible means you can't make mistakes. It was good. Not perfect. Think about that. Chew on that this week. So, my L, my L, why have you forsaken me? Far from saving me, the words of my groaning. Oh, my L, I call by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are set apart and thrown on the praises of Israel. There you go. That's it. No matter what, and no matter what I'm going through, and what decision that I need to make in this uh, bearing thing that's on top of me, you're still enthroned for Israel. No matter what. I'm going to trust in that. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. You've got to realize that you cannot get to the promised land until you go through the wilderness. You can't get there. The wilderness served its purpose. What did Hashem say? He said, I have a purpose for putting you through the wilderness. I'm going to test your heart to see whether you will keep my commands or not. I did this to prove you. Whether you love me, you cannot get to the kingdom without going through the wilderness. We talked about it last week. Life. Life has never been easy for anyone. There has always been something. As we're thinking around right now, uh, the potato famine in Ireland. Horrible. Bad things happen, or what you would consider to be bad things, all the time. No one is exempt. Everyone experiences life. Everybody has defining points. Everybody gets to a point, and I've said that uh, a few times, and this is the way I'm going to teach it this morning. Everybody gets to a point when they've had enough. Okay? You've had enough. Life, we're going to get real this morning, is overbearing sometimes. Life causes depression sometimes. Okay? Life can be very overbearing, but you have two choices. You always have an option. The way is the choice. The way you choose in the decision is your choice, okay? You have two choices. Are you going to do better or are you going to go into a downward spiral? Because things, events happen in our lives and you can either take it and grow or you can take it and become miserable and more miserable and more miserable. So defining point, some people become successful. I'm going to take that and I'm going to grow. Some people take addiction. Life is miserable sometimes. That's just the truth. That's the hard truth. Life can just be so horrible sometimes. But you have a decision. Make that decision. And I really like how Hashem says it many times. I know, two witnesses that I know of. Joshua says, choose you today who you're going to serve. That's today, choose who you're going to serve. That's not, I'm going to wait till tomorrow. You make the decision now who you're going to serve. The father said, choose you life. I said before you life and death. He didn't say, I'm going to wait till next week and you give me an answer. Choose today who you serve. Choose today life. Make that choice. What are we afraid of? You know, fear is a figment of your imagination. You know, you create your own fears. What scares you is not what scares me. Truth? You have your own fears. It's all in your head. If there's no danger, there's nothing to be afraid of. That's why people with anxiety will not go to the grocery store or people who uh, distance themselves um, from society. It's because of the unknown, the uncertainty. We talked about fear before. Uncertainty and anxiety is what comprises up fear. That's why people don't do things. They're afraid. That's why people don't take risks. They're afraid. That's why people won't take the chance. 
what happens? What, what if? What if? What if the best thing that ever happened to you was on the other side of that decision and you just never wanted to make it? You'll never know if you don't make the decision, if you don't take the chance, if you don't take the risk. You know, we convince ourselves more to not do something than we do to do something. We don't encourage ourselves, we discourage ourselves. Where are you, Hashem? They trusted in you and you delivered them. Think about Egypt. They trusted in you and what happened? They were delivered. But I am a worm and no man. That worm is tala. It is, I'm a worm, I am a maggot, I am a grub. That's how you feel sometimes, isn't it? I'm less than nothing. I am a worm. I am a grub. I am a maggot. I am nothing. I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All those who see me mock me. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head. He trusted in Hashem. Let him rescue him. So when making a, a choice and a decision in your life, we probably all experience this. Have you ever asked anybody for advice and they just don't give you a definite answer? You know why? Because they don't want responsibility for giving you the wrong answer. So a lot of people will not help you in your life. You know what that means? It sucks. <laughs> I'm going to get on the streets this morning. <laughs> it's horrible, but you're all alone sometimes. But you know what? I really love what David says about that. Even if I have to serve you alone, Hashem, I'm going to serve you. He said, if my mother and my father forsake me, he said, I've got you. He said, who do I have in heaven? No one. Who do I have on the earth? No one. He said, I only have you. And if you have to travel this road alone this morning, I'm telling you, it's better to be with Hashem than nobody. That's the hard facts. That's the hard truth. People don't want responsibility for your life, so they will not give you an answer because their word is going to be wrong too. <laughs> So, that is your responsibility to seek and to find. And I'm at this point where it's not my job to convert anybody. You know what the sad thing about, one sad thing about Christianity, among the other sad things about Christianity, is they think that it's their job and duty to convert everybody. I'm so done with that. I'm done with that. You know how much more peace I have now understanding Torah and knowing Torah and knowing that I don't have to convert anybody? In the very end, what does Torah say? They will come to you and ask for the answers. You ain't got to go to them. They will say, you know Elohim. You have the one who created the Shamaim and Eretz. You don't have to convert anybody. You don't have to convince anybody. You know what the responsibility is? It is your responsibility to convince yourself. And they'd never teach you that in what we used to teach. They, they would think that's heresy. It's your responsibility to teach yourself. It's your responsibility to save yourself from idolatry. Now, does that negate the responsibility to teach Torah? No. Does that negate the responsibility to love and to care and show kindness and truth? No, by no means. You love Torah and you love teaching Torah. That's it. You love it. But it's not your responsibility to convert anybody. Teach them why you believe what you believe. Back it up with the facts. Continuing on. So that's what we get from verse 7, 8. He trusted in Hashem. Let him rescue him. Who is he trusting right now? His friends aren't helping him. They're mocking him. Let him deliver him, seeing he has delighted in him. For you are the one who took me out of the womb. They didn't. You did. Made me secure on my mother's breast. You were there from the beginning, and he's going to be there till the end. He's seen your whole life. I love Psalms when it comes to me, and it's personal to me. You know my uprising and my sitting down. You know everything about me. You know everywhere I am. You see and you know. 
You are the person, and I love the Proverbs, he says, the one that sticks closer than a brother. He is there. He is there. I was thinking this morning, um, and I'm going to say it this way, and then I'm going to tell you why. The will, and what I'm about to say, is very important in placement. Will Hashem show me favor? We, have to, we often ask ourselves that. Will Hashem show me favor? Okay, but where you place will is very important because I'm going to put it after Hashem. Hashem will show me favor. There's no question about it. If you delight in him and he delights in you, he will show you favor. I was reading this morning in Proverbs, let not kindness and truth forsake you. Kindness is just taking care of one another, showing love to one another. That's kindness. Okay. For every act of kindness you do, undeserved act of kindness, Hashem blesses you with undeserved favor. So be kind. Help one another. Kindness is lacking in the world. People just want to take care of themselves. And this is the shape that we're in. Let him deliver him, seeing he has delighted in him. For you are the one who took me out of the womb. You made me secure on my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my hell. Do not be far from me, for distress is near. For there is, what? None to help. Where's your helper? Where's your help come from? Hashem. So, you have delivered them. You have brought them out. You have uh, brought them into security. You bring them to safety. Hashem, where are you? The teacher is often quiet during the test. Proverbs 15. What decision are you going to make? Proverbs, Proverbs 15 and 28. The heart of the righteous ponders to answer. So the heart is the inner man, the mind. We're thinking, we want a resolution. Our heart, the seat of emotions, our passion, our courage, our inner man. We are pondering, that is meditating. They are plotting to find the correct answer. That's good. They are plotting to find the correct answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil, trouble. They don't think, they don't ponder, they don't meditate. Continuing on. But the mouth of the wicked pours out evil. Verse 29, Hashem is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. If you truly, like we talked about last week, you have a desire for him, you want to follow him, and you want to do his will, you want to be his delight, he will guide you. He will guide you. The way, okay? I like that uh, poem, two roads diverged in the wood, and I chose the one less traveled. Okay, usually, and this is where I'm at, usually the decision that is the hardest for you to make is the very decision that you need to make. The hardest path for you to choose is the very one you need to go down. Can I prove it? I can prove it. The spies, when they came back, Hashem says, go up. What don't they want to do? Go up. Why? Because they're afraid. Remember, you create your own personal fears. They were afraid. Why wasn't Caleb and Joshua afraid? And I saw this quote this week. If you're scared to do something, do it scared. So... Hashem is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. He will guide your life. The light of the eyes rejoices the heart. A good report gives morrow to the bones. An ear that hears the reproof of life dwells among the safe, uh, among the wise. He who ignores discipline hates himself, but he who listens to reproof gets understanding. The reverence of Hashem is the discipline of wisdom, and before esteem is humility. What is rebuke? Correction. It is toka tokecha. It is rebuke, correction, punishment. If you notice right here, 
He who ignores discipline hates himself. He who uh, listens to reproof gets understanding. That is correction. That is correction. You know what that means? You did the wrong thing. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to do the right thing. Teshuva is one of the greatest blessings ever given. That's repentance. You know what repentance is? It's at the very end, so I'm going to flip over. Uh, teshuva is one of the greatest gifts. It is repentance. You know what it is? I'm sorry. Forgive me. Give me another chance. That's wonderful. I did wrong. I failed. Give me one more try. That's Teshuvah. That's the one in which Hashem, he will not despise their sacrifice. So notice, we make mistakes. Two definites in life. Success and failure. Make a decision. Take the risk. Take the chance. It is better to make a decision and fail than to never make a decision and ask, what if? What if I did this instead? What if I did that? Those are regrets. Failure is definite. It is the answer to your question. No more, well, what if and what if and that and that. Well, I'm lost and I don't know what to do. I made a decision. I failed. Now I know the answer. Okay? That's definite. You want definites in your life? You want answers in your life? Make a decision. Success is a definite. It is the answer to your question. And you will never know what is on the other end of that decision until you make it. Stop psyching yourself up and just do it. Because the time and the period that you have to think about it, the time and the period that you have to mull it over is the time and the period you convince yourself you don't want to do it. You discourage yourself. Even though you know that Success or peace or comfort or freedom might be on the other end of that decision. You will never know. What about the good of the outcome? You will never know what if. You'll never be able to go back and relive your life. Your life is dead. That old stage of your life is dead. You cannot go back and revive it. That's so powerful. It's so powerful. It's dead. You can't go back and relive your life. There's many people wearing 80s clothes. <laughs> 80s is the fashion again. You can't go back to the 80s. I'm sorry. Can't go back to the 70s. Can't go back to the 60s. You can't go back in time. It is dead. Stop reliving it. Adaptability and learnability. Learnability is the ability to absorb, process, and... Um, What's the word? I'm, take action. Absorb, process, and take action. This is a part of acuity. Acuity is your ability to focus. Okay, I'm loving this book. This book is just so good. So, acuity is your ability to focus. Your learnability, um, repetition, uh, intensity, and I forgot what the last one is, but these are how we learn things. And I could go deep into the brain. And every time that he, he mentions something and he's writing something in this book, he tells you how your brain works it out. Your brain is awesome. Your brain is so awesome. You can learn new things, okay? And it is all stored somewhere when you are going through compart compartment and compart this is such a hard word. Compartmentalization. Whew, that's a tough one. Uh, your brain is bringing in new scripts. It is deciding what is relevant now, relieving some of the other things, and storing other things. So if you go to the doctor and your number is 33, you only need to know that for right there. That, that's the only time that you need to know that. And your brain by itself throws that thought away. Your brain is awesome. I'm telling you. But you have to take care of it. Okay? So through uh, re repetition, so continuing to repeat something, your brain will create a pathway. It's called neuroplasticity, okay? It has the ability to create new thoughts. It can do it. Now, every time you repeat that or through intensity, intensity and also is passion. So that's the same thing. So trauma, 
That's, that's one side, that's the negative side. But through passion and focus, you can gain new qualities, okay? Your brain creates these pathways, it's called neuroplasticity. They are graving when you sleep. Rest is very important. When you sleep, it is creating a new pathway, a new thought. And when it becomes to get fortified, there's a lubrication called melon, where, I think it's M-Y-E-L-I-N, where it lubricates that pathway and sends signals faster. You can learn new things through repetition. If you don't like your life and the way that it is going, you don't like where you're at, the only way to heal that is to change your life. Change the way you think. Think new thoughts through repetition, through intensity. If you really want it, you can have it. It's yours. If you really want it. That's where that passion and intensity comes from. Learning new things. Your brain is awesome. It, it's, man, it just blows my brain. It blows my mind. <laughs> How awesome that Hashem is. So he's the creator of all. Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6 and 20. My son, watch over your father's command and do not forsake the Torah of your mother. Bind them on your heart always. I do like what the King James Version it says, continually binding. That links back to what we were just talking about, repetition, okay? Continually binding the experience of life. Life is truly experienced, and experience is only experience when it is lived out, okay? If you continue to make the same mistakes over and over, even though you have the experience and you know you need to make new decisions, you haven't changed. That's not experience. You need to be able to apply it. I learned this because of this decision. This taught me that. You are continually binding, okay? You are getting new scripts that are coming into your brain. You are trying to uh, get them, it's scripts, uh, relevance, and then context. So it's, it's so awesome. But anyway, new scripts are coming into your brain, new information is coming into your brain, and you are continually binding. I learned this, I learned that, that is why meditation is so important. That's why it's talked about many times. Meditate on the word because you are repeating it over. So continuing on Proverbs 6 and 20, bind them continually. That's verse 21. On your heart always, tie them around your neck. When you are walking about, it leads you. When you lie down, it guards you. And when you have woken up, it talks to you. For the commandment is a lamp and the Torah a light and reproofs of discipline a way of life. That's just it. I do like what the uh, Eng Easy English says about verse 23, their rules. So it's discipline, it's the light, it's the Torah. These rules, these rules and what they taught you are like a light. They told you when you did wrong things and showed you how to live. I did that wrong. I love to knock. <laughs> you have the ability to make mistakes, okay? That's life, it happens to us. What did you learn? How are you growing? How are you pushing forward? You cannot look back, remember, past dead. You can only move forward and on. So, I do like what the Easy English says, the ISV says, rebukes that discipline are a way of life. So when someone corrects you and rebukes you and you discipline your life accordingly, that's life. That brings life. Remember what I said earlier. It's the way of life. Verse 23, a way is a decision. Two roads diverged in a wood. I chose the one less traveled. The hardest decision you have to make is probably the best decision for you. Okay? The way is a representation of a choice. I chose this way. I chose that way. Just like Hashem said, uh, choose you today, life. 
I set before you life and death. Choose you today. So if you do the things that he commands in Torah, the things that are established, the things that are definites, he said, this is the way to life. It will lead you to life. Choose this way. This is a choice. Living is a choice. Dying is a choice. I put before you life and death. Choose. And notice, I really like that. Today. Today. Make a decision today. Do not put it off. The way is a choice. This way or that way. Deuteronomy 8. Like I said, I would never tell anyone to make a, ch a choice to deliberately sin. What does Hashem say? You will suffer for that. You will suffer for your sins. I am not saying deliberately do that. I'm not saying commit adultery. I'm not saying sin. I'm not saying steal. That is not what I'm saying. I hope we get the context of what I'm saying here. The fact that there are some decisions in your life that are difficult to make. There is not sin on the other end of them. But you're not making a choice because you're afraid of the consequences. You're afraid of what comes out of it, the repercussions. These are the decisions that I'm talking about. So Deuteronomy 8 and 1. Guard to do every command which I command you today, that you might live and shall increase and go in and shall possess the land of which Hashem swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that Hashem your Elohim led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. So there's the way. I led you this direction, okay? Notice, Hashem is with them in the wilderness. He said, I led you this way. Remember that, okay? In those tough and difficult times, he is there. You see my rising up, you see my sitting down, he is there. I brought you through the wilderness. I brought you here. So, you remember that Hashem, your Elohim, led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you. So there was purpose behind that. Remember, you can't get to the kingdom. You cannot get to the promised land without going through the wilderness to humble you, to prove you, to know what is in your heart, whether you guard his commands or not. And he humbled you and let you suffer hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know nor your fathers know, to make you know that a man does not live by bread alone, but all that comes from the mouth of Hashem, your garment did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. The wilderness was not easy. The wilderness was not easy. Let's just go ahead and everybody say that together. The wilderness was not easy. It's not. Going through that dry land, stopping here. How many places did they stop? Stopping here, stopping there, stopping here, popping up, stopping here, 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 everywhere. Okay? The wilderness was not easy. Cut him a break. Your life is not easy. Give yourself a break. Okay? So, what I want to say in this, the wilderness was not easy. They had hunger, thirst, and what I think about is imagine the children. Okay? Imagine the crying of the children. And a lot of times that drives the parents. My children are hungry. Are we dying of thirst out here? Where is our food? That's what I think about. So, the way is a choice. His way is obedience. A man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of Hashem. That's what that means. The word is your life. You depend on him when he says, I'm going to get you from point A to point B. Everything in between is taken care of. That's the bread, the thirst, the hunger, whatever you're going through. The shelter, it's all taken care of. If I'm going to get you from here to here, the middle is taken care of. The right choice is usually the difficult one. Resilience. We talked about that last week. It's the ability to get back to the baseline. Comfort and peace. That's the resilience. So uh, I gave you two of the ways to do that yes, uh, yesterday, Saturday, last Sabbath. I gave you two ways. I'll give you all three this time. Uh, the way to get back to baseline. Comfort, resilience. Once something bad happens to you in your life, something that is stressful, uh, the ability to come back to the baseline, whether you're low or whether you're high, whatever it is, that's resilience. Positive thinking is one. That is a tool. 
Like I told you last week, people who are optimists uh, usually have a higher level of resilience. They can get back to the baseline because they think positively about what's going on. If you realize, and you know, even as Job, if Job would have realized, hey, this is good for me, he could have got back to the baseline, okay? But this is for my good. No matter if you're up or down, see the positive in it. This is going to get me where I'm going. Hashem is going to use this as a shuttle to get me there. Okay? So positive thinking. Gratitude. That's what we want to talk about in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. A lot of times, we're not grateful at all for the things that we have. There is a quote. If you are not grateful for what you have, what makes you think that you would ha be happy with more? If you are not grateful for what you have, what makes you think you would be happy with more? So, gratitude. Just something, anything. Um, surround yourself with people that make life worth living. I love y'all. <laughs> Every single one of you. Every single one of you serve a purpose in my life, and I am so thankful for you. Gratitude. So, Surround yourself with people in your life that bring color, value, make life worth living. So, positive thinking, gratitude. What did they have? My feet didn't swell. My shoes didn't break down on me. Okay? They had that, but they were more worried about what don't we have? I don't have food. I don't have water. I don't have this. Where's the promised land? Gratitude. And then the last one is probably my favorite. Laughing. Laughing. Laughing sends dopamine into your brain, a reliever of depression. Laugh. If you can find a reason to laugh about the situation that you're in, it'll make you get back to the baseline. Sounds crazy. Maybe a little demented. But <laughs> laugh about it. Laugh. So, be grateful, positive thinking, laughing. Think about it with a new perception. Perception is so key in your life, how you perceive what you're going through. Is this for my good or is this evil? just evil? Am I going to benefit from this or is this going to cause me trouble? So positive thinking, perception, how you view what you are currently going through. Uh, so, if you have to make a decision, you have to make a tough decision, this is my advice for you, okay? Pray. Pray. Pray for mercy, wisdom, and guidance. And you know what? He'll do it for you. He will. And if you make a decision and it fails, you know what? Teshuva. I'm not saying go out and make deliberate decisions that are going to harm anyone. I'm not saying that by any means. I'm not saying go out and make a deliberate decision to sin. I think we understand the context that I'm talking about here. The difficult decisions that you have in, in your life and you just do not want to make a choice. Make a choice. Whether you're going to fail or whether it's going to be successful, it is better to fail and to know the definite that I failed by making that decision than to make no decision at all and continue to be tormented by what if. So, make a decision and pray for mercy, wisdom, and guidance. Guidance. Instead of saying, will he show me favor? If you are his delight, and he delights in you, no doubt, he's going to show you favor. So, instead of saying, will he show me favor? Say, Hashem will show me favor. Deuteronomy 30. Teshuva is a gift. Do not, by any means, uh, mistreat Hashem. Okay? Don't just say it's, it's easier to do it and then ask for forgiveness instead of not doing it. That's, that's not the right mentality. That's not the right mentality. Okay? So Teshuva is a gift, if not the greatest gift. The fact that he says you can repent, say I'm sorry, truly feel sorry, Psalms 51, 
truly feel sorry, forgive me. Give me another chance. That is one of the greatest gifts. Deuteronomy 30 and 1, And it shall be when all these words come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have put before you, and you shall bring them back to your heart among all the Gentiles where Hashem your Elohim drives you, and shall turn back to Hashem your Elohim and obey his voice according to all that I command you today with all your heart and with all your being, you and your children, then Hashem your Elohim shall turn back your captivity. What's he going to do? He's going to forgive you. Even after you've been exiled, even after you've been in captivity, if you turn back, he's going to bring you back. Teshuvah. Repentance. And shall turn back to Hashem, your Elohim, and obey his voice according to all that I command you today with all your heart and with all your being, you and your children. Then Hashem, your Elohim, shall turn back your captivity and shall have compassion on you. He shall turn back and gather you from all the peoples where Hashem, your Elohim, has scattered you. If any of you are driven out to the furthest part under the Shemaim, from there Hashem, your Elohim, gathers you, and from there he takes you. And Hashem, your Elohim, shall bring you to the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it. And he shall do good to you and increase you more than your fathers. And Hashem your Elohim shall circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love Hashem your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being so that you might live. Daniel knew there was risk. When he made that decision to stand for Hashem and still bow down, he knew that there was risk there. And what was the risk? It was ultimately his life. Noah knew that there was risk in building that ark. But you know what? He had firmness in Hashem. And he built it, even though they mocked him. And he had nobody. So Daniel knew the risk was his life, but he was resolved. Noah knew the risk, but he was resolved. Do we create our own fears? He knew that that was the right thing to do. Daniel did. So, was it the toughest thing for Daniel to do? Probably. But he knew. Even though fear was present, he did it scared. <laughs> he was confident in Hashem. He knew Hashem was going to take care of him no matter what. And then what did Hashem do? He delivered him from the lion's den and he threw the oppressors in. Make a choice. Choose today. If you have a difficult choice, and I cannot say that enough, I'm not saying choosing to do sin or choosing not to do sin. There are definites in the Torah that say don't do this. Let's get that. Don't eat what's unclean. Don't commit adultery. Do not steal. Honor your mother and father. Keep me as your only one. Hashem, I am your God. You shall have no other mighty ones. Those are solid things, but everybody has difficult decisions in their lives. I'm going to end it with this. It is better to make a decision and fail because you are definite. You know what the answer was than to make no decision at all and continue to torment yourself with the what if. And you do not know what's on the other side of that decision. It could be successful. So don't psych yourself up to not do it. Hashem is so good. Everybody have a blessed day. I think I got everything in there. Everybody have a blessed day. Shabbat Shalom. Baruch Hashem.